Oh, it's Scott Manley here, back in Kerbal's Space Program Universe. Now, while casting around for ideas for a video, I realized that um, I'm not alone in this universe uh, of broadcasting Kerbal Space Program. The, one of the more famous uh, individuals is Kurt J. Mack, and uh, there's also Minifig. Now, I kind of decided I'd look at what they did. Now, Kurt, well, he uh, initially came to... Uh, prominence, let's say, with his uh, Farlanzer bust, which is essentially a giant long walk to the edge of the Minecraft map where uh, the laws of, of physics break down and the terrain generation goes nuts. Um, Minifig, on the other hand, I watched him today and was treated to many, many, well, what seemed like an eternity of him walking over the moon's surface. And so bearing this in mind, it seems that people are actually watching walking. So I decided to put my own little spin on things. And so we have here a spacecraft and we're, we're going to go to the moon and do a moonwalk. So yeah, this is a you know standard orbital uh, insertion and transition straight onto the moon. I originally was going to go into orbit, but uh, fortuitously the moon was right there. So I figured I'd just burn my way out there, get an intercept. Uh, and um, there I go, departing Earth, warping out. And we have plenty of fuel left. We practically can bring our rocket down to the surface using that main tank before we have to ditch it. And then we just have a, a few fuel tanks on board this landing stage here, which will uh, get us down to the surface. You see Richie Kerman here this time. Rich, C, Rich, C, I don't know, whatever. He's a Kerman. So, uh, yeah, we're going to come down and just going to use Mechanical Jeb to do the landing here because, to be honest, the landing is not what's important. What is important is uh, the robotics pack, which you can see I've got a few uh, interesting bits and pieces attached on the side here. We have some rotational joints. We have some uh, truss girders or whatever here. And uh, we've attached them to the side of this vehicle, which, uh, as you can see, is going to land nicely. The landing gear is a little um, unconventional, let's say, but this is far more than landing gear, as we are about to find out. So the idea is we're going to get really close down to the surface using the, the autopilot, and then I'm going to manually turn that off and drop myself onto my legs. So there we have it. It's not the smoothest touchdowns, but we are, in fact, on the surface of the moon, and it is time to uh, do my moonwalk. So let's uh, see what happens. What I'm going to do is just activate these rotational joints. Here we go. Yes, trying to move forwards and falling flat in my butt. Okay, that wasn't what I intended to happen. Let's uh, try and fix this a little. Just um, move forwards. Nope, I'm trying to push down, trying to get the RCS to see if I can drop my nose back on the ground. I think originally this was designed for on Kerbin without the rocket, and I think the rocket mass has kind of made it a bit heavy in the butt. Um, heavy in the ass, and the smart ass is not helping me in this case. I'm just kind of flailing around a little unable to get any traction. It's kind of embarrassing to come all the way here and be like a stranded like a bug, but at least I'm pointing in the right direction, so I could head back to Kerbin if I can't fix this. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's just uh, see if we can get anything going here. This is not the best demonstration of the technology. Let's uh, fire up the rocket just a little because it's actually slightly higher up. You see it's pushing us forwards. Maybe we can get the nose down. And we have success. Let us kill that. Now let's see if we can start moving. And there. Brilliant, huh? So I'm just holding the zero key and that's causing these joints to rotate. It took forever to set these rotational joints up. And actually, I did have to cheat just a little because I had to turn off collisions in the vehicle assembly building. But regardless, it walks rather nicely, as you can see. Um, I've accelerated time so you can actually see the animation and not go completely bored. 
it seems that this can manage maybe half a meter per second on average. So it's actually faster if the Kerbinaut gets out and walks. But that's not the point. The point was to make um, a totally Kerbal vehicle for exploring the moon or any other planet. This will actually work on any planet I've tried it on, but we did want to take that whole moonwalk pun. Uh, pun. Internally, it is not the smoothest ride. Um, <laughs> as you can see, we're just kind of bouncing along the surface just a little here. You can see the root mo mo motion vector is uh, kind of follows an S shape through the artificial horizon. But nonetheless, we are getting places, albeit slowly. So there we go. We're just, you see the speed is just pointing out one meters per second. Now, uh, it will actually go in reverse, but uh, given that we're not going particularly fast, we'll just keep it going this way. Now, I also figured out, well, okay, you can see this. There's also the servo control uh, window up there. And that will also control these things. So it's possible to combine these two. And uh, you move a little faster, except I think most of the velocity gain is actually vertically. We're almost kind of skipping across the surface at this rate. I think it looks kind of cool, even if it is totally impractical. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Maybe the the devs for the or the developers of the mod can come up with a way that I can adjust the speed of these rotational joints. It would be really nice if I could make them move a little faster. So well, yeah, I'm just gonna go and show you some of the prototypes I built. Um, these uh, this was one of the early parts I built with stock pieces, and I copied these the front legs to the back legs. I know something bizarre went wrong in the copy and one of the sets of joints moves twice as fast. So instead of just walking, it's more like a, a frog that hops forth like this. Uh, you see, I've also got the landing legs there to hold it still. So it was more like wheels that would touch the ground only on occasion. Yes, yeah, so uh, you can see uh, this barely moves. Here we go, we're gonna hop again. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Not what you really want to view from the inside. Uh, not the most agile vehicle I've ever built, but certainly kind of fun to drive. You can actually steer these things. The torque from the capsule, if you push, like, hold down A or D, when uh, you get up like this, it does turn it a little. So here, here's me using both the servo control buttons and the keyboard controls, and you see it moves a whole lot faster, huh? Look at that. It's a practically wanting to pitch forward. One step at a time. It's practically leaping forward four or five meters there at a time, huh? That must bring its top speed almost up to one meter per second. Or rather, its sustained average speed. Its top speed is almost like five meters per second. Let's uh, take a look and see what that looks like inside, huh? Whoa, there we go. Definitely, I'm maxing out at about half, uh, five meters per second. That's a definitely faster than walking pace, even though a lot of that is kind of vertical. Um, yeah, so this uses a lot more stock parts. This was kind of like my first um, attempt to getting it working. And uh, as I said, it was bizarre that the second one went and did that. Now this one, I tried to join two sets back to back and somehow the rear section decided it was going to hook up to the rotational joints. And so we get this weird non-walking behavior. Um, another attempt was was this one where I put the capsule on top of this and that didn't work either. But it does kind of move forwards very slowly, albeit a, a slightly closer to the ground. Not bad again. Actually, no, it's terrible. What am I saying? I'm trying to defend this design, which was absolutely terrible. Um, not only was it jerky, but you were upside down. So here was closer to the final design, uh, but you can see the legs were a lot longer, but it doesn't actually help it. In fact, it just ended up pitching forwards and falling a lot more. Uh, what matters is the length of the central joints there because that will really govern how fast you can travel with this 
uh, the the longer those are, the further you go, and you just need to have your legs slightly longer than that. Anyway, um, that is enough of this uh, stupid stuff. We're going to be back to doing some interesting maneuvers next time. There is a mission which will have Kerbin-wide ramifications. The entire planet will be watching the actions of the Kerbal Space Program and their bold astronauts. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.